Okay, so yesterday we released part one of our two-part series where we take a look at every Premier League club and pick a legend we bring back in their prime if we had the free reign to do so. Yesterday took us from AFC Bournemouth to Huddersfield Town, meaning today we'll go from Leicester City to Wolverhampton Wanderers, the clubs being in alphabetical order of course. Here are our views on which club legend each of the 20 Premier League teams should bring back if they could. Part two. Leicester City, Gary Lineker. From stars of yesteryear like Peter Shilton and Arthur Rowley, to recently departed Premier League winners like Riyad Mahrez and N'Golo Kante, there are a whole heap of former Foxes that Claude Puel would love to have at his disposal right now. The two leading candidates for us in the end though were Gordon Banks and Gary Lineker, and since we think the Foxes are stronger between the sticks than they are in attacking areas, it is the crisp salesman who gets the nod from us. Lineker was not a ferociously talented footballer, but he was an exceptional goalscorer. Quick, smart and clinical, he started his career with his boyhood club before going on to star for the likes of Tottenham and Barcelona, as well as winning a World Cup golden boot. Liverpool, Alan Hansen. Liverpool are the second most successful club in England and the country's most successful on the European stage, so it's little surprise that they have a raft of legends longer than my arm. What's more, Jurgen Klopp's current Reds team are a joy to watch and we suspect any former player would love to step into this vibrant and attacking side. We steered clear of attacking players given the brilliance of Liverpool's front three, but strongly considered Steven Gerrard for the dynamism and quality he'd bring to the team's midfield. In the end though, Liverpool still have one obvious weakness in our eyes, and that is alongside Virgil van Dijk at centre-half. Alan Hansen is one of the most gifted and gracious central defenders in the history of the British game, and if he were returned to Anfield in his pomp, they'd be a frightening proposition for any team in England and beyond. Manchester City, Yaya Toure. Okay, I can see this being a touch controversial, so I best justify my position. Firstly, there'll be some who suggest that Torre's selection indicates Man City have no history, which obviously isn't true, and I apologise to City fans for that. The truth is, we weren't short on legends from the blue side of Manchester. Bert Troutman, Peter Doherty, Billy Meredith, we could go on. However, City are absolutely drowning in quality on the flanks and in attacking midfield, and with Edison between the sticks, they're hardly in dire need of a top-class goalkeeper. The only weakness we see in Pep Guardiola's team is the lack of replacement for Fernandinho, who is 33 now, so that's why we've opted for Yaya Toure, who could play anywhere in the middle of the park from a holding to an offensive role absolutely brilliantly at his best. Colin Bell obviously needs a mention, but we think Yaya will be better suited to just sitting in there when called upon. Manchester United, Paul Scholes. Okay, where to start with Manchester United? No club in England can touch them in terms of the sheer weight of world-class former players. Given Jose Mourinho's desperate scramble for a centre-back at the end of the transfer window, the likes of Ferdinand, Vidic and Stam maybe ought to have been in contention. The trio of Best, Charlton and Law are difficult to overlook, whilst Cristiano Ronaldo's raw match-winning ability drove our eventual pick the closest. With much doubt, and I still wouldn't argue with anyone who would pick any of the above or Roy Keane or Brian Robson instead, we've gone for Paul Scholes. This United team lacks identity under Jose Mourinho, and Scholes was a master when it came to controlling the tempo of a game. He'd be a tremendous influence on this current side, although so too would be all the others mentioned. Newcastle United, Alan Shearer. Alright, so younger viewers may have been thinking this one was a foregone conclusion, but it really wasn't. Newcastle United have had some truly unbelievable players over the years, particularly in attacking areas. Jackie Milburn, Huey Gallagher, and even Andy Cole have to be considered, and Gallagher in particular we would be happy to give the nod to over Shearer, but in the end we went for the Magpies all-time leading scorer. That man is of course Alan Shearer, who scored 206 goals in 405 games. Powerful, smart, and rather nasty, Shearer scored every type of goal. No offence to new recruit Solomon Rondon, but Shearer would be a pretty hefty upgrade as centre forward for Rafa Benitez. Southampton, Mick Shannon. Now, Southampton fans and the rest of the footballing world will no doubt have been expecting Matthew Letizia to be a shoe in here, so I'd best explain why he isn't. Mark Hughes is currently playing a sort of 3-4-2-1 at St Mary's, with the pacey Nathan Redmond and Stuart Armstrong as his two in behind a centre forward. Letizia was a marvellous technician, but he was neither the quickest nor the fittest, and Southampton would basically have to build their team around him if we were to bring him back. In the centre-forward position, the Saints have had some great players, from Alan Shearer to Peter Osgood. 
Neither of those two played their best football on the south coast though, so our pick is the only former Saint with more goals for the club than Lattice, a certain Mickshan. The score of 228 goals in 607 games for Southampton, Shannon was a complete centre forward who could do it all, and he'd be a brilliant candidate to lead Mark Hughes's line today. Tottenham, Luka Modric. Tottenham was a really tough one. It is a mark of how strong Spurs are in certain areas that the likes of Jimmy Greaves, Gary Lineker, Paul Gascoigne, Glenn Hoddle and Gareth Bale didn't even get much of a look in for us. We think the place to strengthen for Tottenham is central or defensive midfield, and that means a toss-up between Danny Blanchflower, Luka Modric and Dave Mackay. Modric tended to play more of an advanced role at White Hart Lane, but he has proved himself as probably the finest central midfielder in world football at Real Madrid. For that reason, it's Modric who gets the nod for us, coming in for one of Spurs' central or holding options, whether that be Dyer, Sissoko, Wanyama, Winks, or Dembele. Watford, Luther Blissett. The two obvious candidates for Watford are John Barnes and Luther Blissett. Barnes is probably considered the better of the two players in wider circles, but Watford boss Javi Garcia is currently playing a narrow 4-2-2-2, with no obvious way in which to accommodate an out-and-out -out wide man like Barnes. Up front, however, Watford leave a little more to be desired. Troy Deeney and Andre Gray currently occupy the centre-four positions, but Luther Blissett would be an obvious upgrade on either. The Hornets' all-time leading goalscorer and appearance holder, Blissett had three stints at Vicarage Road, along with a brief spell in Italy with AC Milan. A quick, strong and industrious frontman, Blissett edges out Barnes as our choice for Watford. West Ham, Bobby Moore. Okay, so this is a case of just weighing up where the team lacks quality against just how good the player was, and in Bobby Moore's case, he was just too good. West Ham made a lot of signings over the summer, and it remains to be seen who will impress and who could flop. On the face of it, the Hammers don't really need reinforcements at centre-back, although their 4-0 defeat to Liverpool may have suggested otherwise. De Canio, Brooking, Hurst and Tevez may all warrant mentions, but ultimately it was the great Martin Peters who ran more closest for us. In the end though, Moore's combination of silk and steel, his towering presence as both a footballer and as a man, and his exceptional leadership credentials mean we have to go with the Hammers greatest ever player. Wolves, Stan Cullis. Talking of great English centre-halves, another man who would make our all-time top five in that category would be Stan Cullis. Wolves boss Nuno Espirito Santo has a fantastic squad at his disposal by promoted club standards, and he seems pretty set on playing a 3-4-3. With that being the case, an upgrade on Ryan Bennett at centre-back or Raul Jimenez at centre-forward was our main focus. Billy Wright is an obvious candidate as England's first player to reach a century of caps and someone who could step in to that back three. Meanwhile, Steve Bull and Roy Swinburne caused a few headaches up top. In the end though, we've gone for Stan Collis, a world-class cultured centre-half and leader who would make this Wolves side so tough to beat. So that's it for our seven. Thanks for watching, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for more from us if you enjoyed the video, and you can now also follow us on Twitter for more ramblings from me. Our username is simply at HITC7s.